Hi guys, so today I have with me a relative motion problem, but before I actually get started on this problem, I wanted to make a request, and that is, if you find my videos helpful, if you like my videos, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me if you do, because one of my goals is to hit 500 subscribers by the end of this year, so I would really, really appreciate if you can like, subscribe, and share with your friends, or your classmates, or you know anyone who wants to learn physics. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. All right, okay. So another thing is this problem is not my own, but the work, the solution is my own. All right, now that that's out of the way. Oh, and sorry, this is a problem from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook, either the 14th or 15th, 15th edition. I sometimes actually mix up the question number, but the problem is definitely from that textbook. All right, okay, now let's get started. So a railroad flat car is traveling to the right at a speed of 13.0 meters per second relative to an observer standing on the ground. Someone is riding a motor scooter on the flat car. What is the velocity and mag velocity, magnitude and direction of the scooter relative to the flat car if the scooter's velocity relative to the observer on the ground is a 18.0 meters per second to the right? B, 3.0 meters per second to the left, and C, zero. Okay, so as you can probably already see, there is a diagram on the bottom right corner, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw our, well, it says that uh, we want direction, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw our like directions. So this is going to be right, I'm gonna say is positive. Okay, so right is positive, and then left I'm going to say is negative, right? So that's just the system that I set up for myself. Okay, now that I've done that, let's just talk about this diagram a little bit. So we can see that we're this person, right? We're just stationary observers, and we're watching this railroad flat car. In this railroad flat car, it says that it's moving at 13.0 meters per second. And there is also a motor scooter right over here. Okay, so we want to know the velocity of the scooter relative to the flat car. Okay, so how fast is this thing going, is this guy going, if the scooter's velocity relative to the observer on the ground is 18.0 meters per second to the right? So that means that when this guy is going 18.0 Actually, you know what? I'm gonna write it right over here, 18.0 meters per second to the right, 3.0 meters per second to the left. So I'm gonna say 3.0 meters per second to the left or just a zero. And it looks like it's not moving at all, okay? And so what exactly does this mean, right? This problem is basically saying that, well, this railroad, is moving, let me just check if I, okay, I'm recording and my voice, my my microphone is on. Okay, so yeah, this railroad is moving, right? And it's moving at some speed. It's moving at 13.0 meters per second, but you know, it's moving at some speed. Also, this guy is moving at some speed. It could be moving this way. This guy could be moving this way. It's moving somehow, right? So this guy is going to be you know, driving on top or, you know, um, yeah, driving or riding on top of this flat car, which means that in addition to this, you know, the speed that the real, uh, the railroad flat car is already going, we observe, you know, another speed for this guy. So like even, for example, if this, um, I'm going to use a really simple one, but let's say that this guy is moving one 0 0.0 meters per second on top of this 13.0 meters per second, okay? That means for us, we would observe 14.0 meters per second, right? Because it's moving 13 this way and another one. So it's moving 14.0 meters per second altogether. So that's like a really, you know, um, conceptually that's easier in our head to understand, right? But when we, when we only when we know, okay, when the speed that we know is the one that we're measuring and we know how, how fast the rail car is going, then, you know, it's a little bit more, I guess, 
um, complex to know how fast this guy on this scooter is going, right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. And that's really what relative motion and this chain rule is for. Okay, so let's actually write down all of our known so that this problem's a little bit easier for us. I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything because I don't wanna erase the scale. I really like how straight my line is. Okay, and of course I just, okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that because I'm scared if I'm gonna erase more it's not going to, I mean, sorry, if I erase more, it's going to erase that scale thing I drew. Okay, so knowns. What are our knowns? Okay, so let's say the flat car is, let's symbolize that with F. So the speed of the flat car relative to the ground is equal to 13.0 meters per second to the right. Right, so we can say it's going to be the right. I'm just, you know, putting R right here, but really this is positive, so we already know that it's going to the right. Okay. And that is to an observer standing on the ground, right? So that means flat car relative to the ground is 13.0 meters per second. Okay. Now, someone is riding a motor scooter on the flat car. Okay, so that means the scooter relative to the flat car has some speed. And what is that speed? What is the velocity of the scooter relative to the flat car? We don't know. So this is what we're trying to figure out. But what we do know is that if the scooter's velocity relative to the observer on the ground, so we're going to say the scooter relative to the ground is equal to 18.0 meters per second, or minus 3.0 meters per second, right? And notice how if this is positive, so I don't have to write right, and this is negative, so I don't have to write left, and then zero meters per second, right? So we know that this the scooter relative to the ground, we have that information, we have flat car relative to the ground, but what we're looking for is the scooter relative to the flat car, okay? So now let's go ahead and write down our chain rule. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna do that right over here. Our, well, when I look at this, I can see that for chain rule, we can write it this way. We can say scooter relative to the ground is equal to scooter relative to the flat car plus flat car relative to the ground, right? So we know that this is chain rule and essentially what chain rule is, is that like these two middle, I guess, um, parts cancel out and we're just left with scooter relative to the ground. So we just have to add these two together to get this, but we're looking for um, SVF. So scooter relative to the flat car is equal to scooter relative to the ground minus flat car relative to the ground. So if we use this right over here, that's how we're going to get our answer, right? For scooter, scooter relative to the flat car, because that's what we're looking for, the magnitude and direction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, because we're working with ve uh, vectors, magnitude and direction, I'm just going to um, put my vectors on top to indicate that they're vectors. Okay, so for part A, okay. So for part A, we want to find out what scooter relative to flat car is. And in part A, we know that scooter relative to the ground, right? And this in part A is 18.0 18 meters per second, okay? Minus, minus flat car relative to the ground, which is this right over here which is minus 13.0 meters per second. And that gives us 5.0 meters per second, right? And because this is positive, we know that this is moving right. 
So that is our relative speed, right? So our speed of the flat car, sorry, our scooter relative to the flat car is 5.0 meters to the right, right? Okay, now for part B. I'm gonna do a different color. And let's make this, let's make it match their diagram. I know I always go for pink, but let's do blue today. Okay. Okay, so now again, we're looking for SVF. And now for part B, it's going to be 3.0 to the meters per second to the left. So it's minus 3.0 meters per second. And it's going to be minus, right? Because you have minus right over here. V, sorry, F, V, G. So flat car relative to the ground, which is 13.0 meters per second. And now we have minus 16.0 meters per second, which means, you know, it's moving to the left. So actually the way I would write this, I wouldn't even say minus 16 to the left. I would just say like equal to six minus 16.0 meters per second or 16.0 meters per second to the left. Okay. And then finally for part three, let's do orange to match this scooter, right? So now for C, we have S scooter relative to the flat car again, and that's going to be zero meters per second minus, right, minus 13.0 meters per second. Oh, you know what? Okay, this is so random, but I just remembered that Zoom has this cool new feature where you can like choose the color of like, you can like, I think it, I think it's a color dropper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, I don't know if that's actually a color dropper. Okay, I'll figure that out later. Sorry, sorry for going off topic. I thought it was like one of those color droppers where I could just like go like this. I could go like this and it would choose the color from a picture. And I thought I could like match pictures with the color that I'm writing with. So it could be like aesthetic, but um, never mind. Well, never mind me. I'll figure that out later. Maybe there is a way I'm just misinterpreting it. Okay, so SPF, and this is going to be minus 13.0 and meters per second, there we go. Minus 13.0 meters per second. And yeah, that means 13.0 meters per second left, right? So essentially I'm gonna take a, um, a highlighter and I'm just gonna go over all of the answers that we got and I'm gonna do this in green. But yeah, so for A, that's your answer. It's going to be 5.0 meters per second to the right. For B, it's going to be 16.0 meters per second to the left. And then for C, it's going to be 13.0 meters per second to the left. And that's our solution for this problem. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments or send me an email. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.